You're watching France Fan 4 and it's time now for our daily look at the international press. Ruben Easy joins me in the studio. Good morning, Ruben. Let's start in France and this issue of immigration just goes on and on. What's the latest row about? It doesn't it? Well, the latest one is the fact that France's big flagship uh, Cité de l'Immigration, the first national m museum devoted to immigration issues in France, opened yesterday and not a single member of government was there. They were conspicuous by their absence, really. The piece in La Croix today, this is a, a largely Catholic, sort of centrist French newspaper, uh, wondering why this might have been, and now they're, they're saying it's simply because immigration remains a rather divisive issue in France that no members of government wanted to be associated with it. Not even Brice Hortefeuille, France's new, you know, first ever Minister for Immigration Affairs. The gov government saying there are far more pragmatic pragmatic reasons, such as the fact that Mr Sarkozy is currently in Russia, so he couldn't attend. Although it's hard, it's hard not to imagine there might be some connection with the current uh, scandal, sort of in the controversy over DNA testing for immigrants. Yes, indeed, and that, uh, of course, was uh, causing the French Parliament no end of trouble last week. Is that still rumbling on in the press? Yeah, very much so. In uh, today's uh, Figaro, there's an opinion piece by Chador Javan. She's a she's an Iranian exile, lives in France, known for fairly sort of uh, uh, forthright opinions. This piece, no different. It's called Your DNA, Please. She's saying France is uh, overly polarised on the issue. It's either a question of sort of left wing. Uh, uh, guilt towards uh, the sort of post-colonial guilt saying we should take in all immigrants or it's a more right-wing sort of blanket refusal of immigrants. None of this is working, she says. One idea she's got, again, likely to be rather controversial, she says, why can't the French state pay for fl regular flights home, visits back to their uh, country of origin for immigrants? That way they could see their family every couple of weeks or month, but without the French having to bring their whole family to live in France. Goodness you know. me. Well, let's see how that goes down. Um, now, Ruben, uh, rather depressing statistics on war in Africa. Two steps forward, one step back, it seems. Yeah, this, this is from The Guardian. It's, it's a new report from Oxfam entitled, uh, entitled Africa's Missing Billions, really looking at the economic cost of conflicts in Africa. They, they work out since the Cold War, it tots up to about £150 billion, pounds, something around €215 billion, Euros, which they say is roughly equivalent to all the foreign aid which has come into the continent in the same period. They've, they've brought out this report. It coincides with the UN conference about a, uh, a proposed new arms treaty, control, controlling arms, because after all, 95% of all the weapons that have come into Africa, they say, have come from abroad. So that's really something that uh, needs to be controlled. Right, and uh, someone's going to be, at least one person, is going to be very happy today, of course, when the Nobel Prize for Literature is announced. My money's on Philip Roth, am I right? Well, he is the favourite. He's odds-on favourite at 7-2. to two. This is quite a funny piece in the Frankfurter Allgemeine German paper, treating the whole thing like a horse race. They're saying there's a million, pound, million euros up for stake for the winner, but far more money on the betting. So, yeah, Philip, Philip Roth, odds-on favourite. You can have Salman Rushdie at 100-1. to one. Goodness, that's a bit more of a long shot. Well, uh, finally, Ruben, people have been getting excited about some rather mysterious footprints. Tell yeah, us about those. Not just any footprints. They're 60 centimetres long. Thought to be the world's first ever find of a T-Rex footprint. In America's Badlands, in a place called Hell Creek, there's a British researcher thinks he's found it, but he's not telling anyone where it is yet because they need to do a few further tests. But you can see it there. It's a pretty astonishing sight. Goodness, well, thank you very much indeed, Ruben Easy, for that review of the day's papers. You're watching France 24. Stay with us.